We wanted to build a medical school that would address the future of healthcare, not what has been true in the past. Without the support probably of the community, uh, both the lay people, the, the business people, and the politicians, we probably would not be here where we are today. Because most medical schools in, in the country are geared towards research or some specific uh, area of excellence, but they're not really geared towards what students go into medicine for, which is to help people. There's palpable excitement spreading in the Inland Empire. It's an excitement born of hope, promise, and realized dreams. It's the excitement of building the first public medical school in the state of California in almost 50 years. I fully intend that the school will not only ultimately address the healthcare manpower issues of our areas will not only have a huge economic impact in a positive way in our community, but ultimately we will improve the health of everyone that lives in Inland Southern California. And that's a good thing because it turns out we're in the bottom quartile of virtually every measurable health outcome uh, in the state of California. And it's an excitement created by the unique mission of this medical school. Ultimately, we're trying to train the kinds of physicians to go into the fields our society needs, to impact their communities in a positive way, and they're the kinds of doctors that you and I would want as our doctor. However, training future doctors at UCR is not new. For more than 30 years, a partnership with UCLA has produced some 700 doctors. And for the last 15 years, first and second year students have participated in a biomedical sciences program at UCR created and supported by Dr. Thomas Heider and his wife Salma. The logical next step was to create a medical school to focus on the unique issues facing the Inland Empire. I think that everybody in this community, in, 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 I'm using that in its broadest sense, whether San Bernardino and Riverside and even Imperial Counties, really understood the dire need uh, for uh, having uh, the medical school to drive, I think, a couple of real issues. One of the issues to drive was to be able to recruit and attract physicians and other healthcare providers uh, to the area. The second is to be able to have an opportunity for our young students and young people in this environment to have an access to go to medical school. And I think the third is, is an economic driver. The founding dean of the med school, Dr. G. Richard Olds, believes that for the medical school to be successful, it must look toward the future. If we're gonna deliver higher quality healthcare for less money, the key to that ingredient is outstanding primary care. That's the doctor you go to to prevent disease when you first get ill. Training more primary care doctors is just one of the new school's innovative ideas. Another is how to deal with this area's severe shortage of doctors. You know, if you have a problem uh, recruiting doctors to Barstow, you know what you should do? Look for a bright kid from Barstow that wants to go to medical school, train that student, and the odds are you have a fighting chance for him or her to return to their hometown in practice. So one of the goals of, of our medical school is to, to bring in students from the area who train here, do their medical school training here, go to a residency here in, in the Inland Empire, and from all of that time spent living here, it's natural that they're gonna stay here in the community. Okay, so what does the M stand for? Morphine, all right. And how does that help? Relieving the pain and so it'll decrease the stress on the body and the heart, right? Dr. Michael Duarte is almost a poster child for this philosophy. Born in Fontana and raised in Upland, Duarte sees additional benefits in developing homegrown medical providers. We want the student who's from the Coachella Valley, who's from uh, somewhere in San Bernardino County or Riverside County, who you know, potentially has been in an underserved community and, and knows and feels what that's like, um, to, to have either themselves or a family member not have access to health care. I think one of the main reasons why I, I chose to become a physician um, was from the experiences that I had growing up as a child. I'm actually an, an immigrant from Mexico. I was born in Mexico, raised in Southern California. And the experiences that myself and my family had growing up with healthcare, um, I saw that there was a lot of barriers to 
quality health care. When it came to issues with language barriers, uh, my parents didn't speak English, so we were used as translators when I was young, um, which creates a lot of barriers when you're talking to a five-year-old, six-year-old to try to translate medical English to their parents. If you always have a doctor who is kind of from outside of your community or outside of your cultural practice, they might be giving you recommendations that simply don't make sense for your day-to-day -day life. I think it's really important that we train physicians who are both familiar with the Inland Empire and also committed to working with this particular patient population. My research is suggesting that people who live here who may be more vulnerable to poor care um, might be receiving poorer care and so perhaps one solution to that is to have doctors who are really committed to improving care for vulnerable patients in this area. We plan to take different types of students into our med school than traditionally get into many of the other med schools and we're doing that uh, in part because I'm very good at training uh, intelligent people to become doctors but I'm not very good at taking mediocre people and make them into better people. Fortunately, better, smarter people are exactly what they've gotten. Ultimately, you're going to school with these people. You're going to school with these students who are very passionate about what they're doing. And because they're so compassionate and proactive about what they do, they, they get involved with volunteering, they get involved with research, they can do all these things. And the best part is that they come and talk to you about it. Here we have what's called the Student Run Health Clinic. Um, and in this clinic, we're actually able to go out to the Riverside community and help those who are homeless, um, who don't have enough insurance, uh, who don't have any insurance at all, and give them just kind of basic medical services. That I have found to be extremely rewarding. We're all willing to help each other out and you know study with one another so all of us can accomplish our goals. Due to changing political and economic realities, doctors of the future will have to know more than just how to practice good medicine. I think it's important that primary care physician knows more than just the medicine um, be behind healthcare, but also how the system of healthcare works and how they can best keep their patients healthy and out of emergency rooms and, and hospitals. This philosophy has made the UCR School of Medicine not only cutting edge, but a medical school for the future. If you look at the Affordable Care Act, if you look at how we're going to address these poor statistics about how much money we spend but how relatively unhealthy we are, we have to change. So ultimately, some med school has to step forward and say, OK, one of the ways to drive change is to train doctors differently. Let's train them around wellness. Let's train them about how we keep patients out of the hospital. Let's train them in outpatient settings where we want to practice medicine and where the most cost-effective medical care takes place. Now those may seem like really radical ideas because not very many other med schools are doing that, but I believe those are the right ways to train doctors and those are the right ideas to build a medical school around. And if I am correct, 15 years from now, UCR will not only have changed inland Southern California, but we will have changed the way other medical schools train their own physicians.